And the reading today is from John 11, verse 1 to 44. The death of Lazarus. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent a word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he said to the disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daytime will not stumble, for they will see this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so you may believe, but let us go on to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, notice how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept his, this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Well, good morning and happy Easter. Um, so pleased you could join us this morning and be a part of the Restore Living Room, that you've come to celebrate Easter with us and come to celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead and we've got something to celebrate. Uh, we're also um, over in the Enfield congregation. We're celebrating five years together with Southgate Christian Fellowship when they joined us five years ago at Easter. So it's so good um, to have you as part of the family. Just wanted to make mention of that. And who knew that we would have a horse noise on our Easter Day celebration? I was a bit taken aback by that. I'm sure you were too. Um, but what a great video and lovely to see uh, so many of us making fools of ourselves on the Happy Day video. I hope that's going to be available uh, afterwards as well so we can have another look at it and another giggle. Um, but often at Easter, uh, people talk about the actual event of the resurrection, about when the, the stone was rolled away, when the, when the women went to the tomb and it was empty. And they talk about a lot about the event of Easter. But this morning, as you may have guessed from the, the reading, thank you, Karibas, that was beautiful. Really loved having you uh, doing the reading for us this morning. Uh, but you may have noticed from the, from the, um, from the reading, I want to focus more on the statement uh, of, that Jesus made about the resurrection. And so Easter, it's probably our biggest celebration as Christians. Uh, we have Christmas and we have Easter. And uh, we, it often prompts the question around kind of friends and family and neighbours, who is Jesus? And Jesus, when he was alive, he made uh, seven I am statements, which is really helpful. In the Gospel of John, he made seven I am statements, uh, which kind of gave a picture as to who Jesus is. And so we want to focus this morning on one of those statements that was in the reading, and it fits best for this morning, I think, um, out of all the I am statements. And so we're going to look at I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And just so we're all um, on the same page and we know what resurrection means, so I am the resurrection and the life. Resurrection is when uh, something is dead and it comes back to life. So resurrection, just so we're all clear, is when something's dead and it comes back to life. And many people are hoping uh, that that's what's going to happen to my love life. Um, so that something that's dead may come back to life. Who knows? That would be a miracle of resurrection in 2020, wouldn't it? Um, but I know there's lots of friends and family watching this morning, so I thought they'd enjoy that joke. Uh, anyway, back to Jesus. Uh, so Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And, and he did that in the context, as we, uh, we heard, of a much broader story, the story of Lazarus, um, another guy who died um, and came back to life again. And I want to share with you just a few thoughts this morning on, on that story and particularly on the reactions of three people within that story and how I think some of us may relate uh, to how they're feeling during the Lazarus story. And as I was reading through, um, before we get on to those three reactions, I was really struck Right at the beginning in verse 3, it says, when the sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, uh, they came to get sent word to Jesus and said, Lord, the one you love is sick. And I don't know about you, but I've heard that recently. And it really struck me that that seems to be a phrase a lot of us are hearing, maybe not in those exact words, but we're hearing the one you love is, is sick. And the last few weeks, we've had uh, more sickness and death than, than we've had in a long time, in such a short amount of time. And, you know, yesterday, just yesterday, I had five separate messages from people telling me that, some, that they were facing sickness or death. In one Saturday afternoon, five messages saying sickness and death. The one you love is sick. And it's bad news that I didn't want to hear, if I'm honest. And when we get news like that, and it might be, at the moment, it is bad news quite often that someone we love is sick. Someone we love has got a high temperature or they're coughing or they're struggling to breathe or they're being taken to hospital or they're in intensive care or they didn't make it. And that's the reality that we're living in right now. And I think we've just got to be really honest about that, that the bad news hits hard. The one we love is sick. Or it might be bad news that your job is no longer secure. Or the bad news that your, your bank account, your finances are going into the overdraft right now. 
It might be the bad news that your marriage might not make the end of lockdown, that things are tough at home. It might be the bad news that your family is falling apart. Or maybe it's the bad news and the realisation that you're alone and isolated. And when we get bad news, something on the inside of us dies. Yesterday, by the fifth message of the day, the fifth bad news of the day, a little bit of me on the inside had died. Because it's a lot to take in, isn't it? It's a lot to, to cope with. And I think if we're really honest with one another, over the past few weeks, probably a little bit of us on the inside has died. And so Jesus gets this bad news, and, and what does he do? He doesn't panic. He doesn't rush to go and see, to go and see the sisters and to go and see Lazarus. Because he knows, and he says that this will bring God glory. And it's hard for us to, to get our heads around that, that in, the, in the difficult times, God's saying, but this I can turn around and bring glory to me through. I can change your opinion of me so that you'll praise me in this and through this. And maybe some of us have received that bad news that someone we love is, is sick, that our job's not secure, that our finances are struggling, that our family is falling apart, that our marriage might not make it, that we're feeling alone and isolated. And we feel a little bit like the sisters. We've, we've been left waiting. And Jesus isn't, isn't panicking. Like Ian said last week in Palm Sunday, he's got this. He's got this. And I think this morning he want, God wants to remind us that he's got this. That he can turn around uh, the bad to the good. That he can make what's impossible possible. And so I want to look at three reactions from at the three different people in the story and, and show us different ways that we might feel like we've, we've become dead inside over the last few weeks. So the first one is Thomas. And we know Thomas. He's known as Doubting Thomas. So that kind of gives it away a little bit. That's his name. And so Doubting Thomas, uh, there's no surprise that he is dead in his doubt. I love that when, it, when Jesus says a couple of days later, OK, let's go, Thomas says, oh, we may as well go with him and die with him. You know, they were going back to a place where they'd been threatened to be killed. And so Thomas, in his doubt that this could ever, anything good could come out of this, he's going, oh, all right then. I doubt anything can come of this. We may as well go and die. I wonder if he should have been called sarcastic Thomas. I quite like his tone. But doubting Thomas he is. And so if it's, it's, I don't know if we've felt like that. Well, what good can come out of this situation? I doubt anything good could come out of this. And so we've had kind of spiritual doubts over the last few weeks. Like, what is going on? I doubt God's got this. I doubt anything good can come from this. It's all going down the pan. Or maybe we've had doubts in our prayers. We've been praying for someone to, to be healed. We've been praying for someone to stay protected. And it hasn't happened. We're praying for our, our job to, to stay safe, so we could get furloughed or, or something really helpful. But that hasn't happened. And so we're doubting. And on the inside, we've, we've become dead in our doubt. We thought, if God's all-powerful, why hasn't he stopped this? Why is this pandemic still going on? Why is it raging? Why is there no end to it right now? And so we have doubts and we carry doubts. And I'm just being really honest about some of the thoughts I've had. And that I'm pretty sure we've all had over this season. And so then we're like Thomas, and we're being we're a little bit dead in our doubts. But then there's Mary. And Mary, I, I, I usually love Mary, but um, she cracks me up here, because Mary is dead in her discouragement. Uh, what, she's, what she does here, when Jesus arrives, she doesn't even go out to greet him. When Jesus arrives um, at, in their town, it says that she stayed in the house. She stayed in the house. She didn't even bother to go out. She was so discouraged. She was so stuck in the moment that she, she didn't even bother. She's like, why would I go and greet him? Lazarus is dead now. What's the point? And some of us are, are maybe there. We're in the why bother stage. 
We're dead in our discouragement. Like, why bother praying? It's clearly not going to end anytime soon. Why bother uh, why bother um, gathering together as church online? It's not the same. Why bother? And we're, we're stuck because we think the situation's not going to change. And so we're so discouraged by what's going on. Because actually, if we listen to the news every day, there's not a lot of good news. It's easy to become discouraged. It's easy to look at the stats. It's easy to look at the predictions um, that the, the people are saying and, and to be downhearted and discouraged and go, well, it's not changing. We thought three weeks of lockdown might, might help, but do you know what? We're going to be in lockdown a little bit longer now, most likely. So why, why bother? I don't see any good happening. I can't, I can't seem to catch a break. And some of us feel stuck in our loneliness, or stuck in our sickness, or stuck in our grief for those who have passed away. I can't change anything. I'm always going to be like this. I'm always going to be discouraged. And so we're dead in our discouragement. So some of us are like Thomas and and dead in our doubts, and some of us a little bit more like Mary and dead in our discouragements. And then you've got Martha, lovely Martha, and Martha is, is dead in the delay. She's dead in the delay. And maybe a lot of us relate to this one, I think, because God's taking too long. Like we've been praying for a few weeks now, God. You're taking too long. And so there's this delay. Like Why hasn't it changed? Why, why, it's, been, it's been three weeks in lockdown. Why hasn't it changed? It's been going on for months in the world and the global um, pandemic. Why hasn't it changed? God, why haven't you done something yet? Why haven't you uh, given the, the scientists um, supernatural wisdom to, to get the vaccine ready and, and sorted? And I know it's on the way, and that's really exciting that it could be ready by the end of the year. And that's amazing. But we want it now. We're like, God, why are you delaying? What's taking you so long? People are dying right now. The one we love is sick. What's taking you so long? And I love that in... And the Bible, Martha, uh, when she tells Jesus that he took too long and he says, let's go to the, the, let's go to the tomb. And she goes, really? He's been in there a few days now. And the, uh, the old um, translation of the Bible, the, new, the King James Version, uh, says that Lazarus, Lazarus stinketh. And I love that, stinketh. But we wouldn't say that. It, but he is pretty stinky. He's been in there a while. You know, it's taken God so long that Lazarus is now stinky. And some of us, we're in a situation, and it's a really stinky situation. We're saying, God, this is, you've taken too long, and look at it now. Look at the mess. Look at the devastation. Look at my marriage falling apart. Look at how lonely I am. Look at the sickness. Look at my job situation. Look at my bank balance. You've taken too long, and now it's stinky. And some of my friends might use a different word. They might say, maybe you've taken so long that the stink has hit the fan now. (laughs) The stink has hit the fan. Like, this is too long, God. It's too messy. It's too beyond repair. There's surely no way out of this now. And so we say to God, you're too late. And we're dead in the delay. Why didn't you come sooner? Why didn't you come sooner? You could have saved a whole lot of heartache. You could have saved a whole lot of pain. A whole lot of worry. Why didn't you come sooner? But I want us to hear this this morning. Just because God hasn't done something yet, doesn't mean he hasn't got it. It doesn't mean he's not holding it and holding you. Just because he hasn't done it yet, It doesn't mean he won't, and it doesn't mean he can't. Because we believe in a God who says all things are possible. All things are possible. And I think Martha, even though she says it's really stinky right now, and Lazarus, is it's too too late. He's too far gone. It's been four days he's been in that tomb, and it's, it's too much. But Martha then says in verse 22... She says, but I know that even now, 
I know that even now, I think some of us this morning are being offered an even now moment. I think we have an opportunity to have an even now, even now when things look impossible, even now when, when things look like they're too far gone, even now, even now, all, still all things are possible. Because we get, we get so stuck in the first part of the story that we maybe miss the second part and the miracle of it all and what it means for us today on Easter Sunday. That we can have an even now, even now I'm, I'm, I'm dead in my doubt, even now that I'm, I'm dead in my discouragement, even now that I'm dead in the delay and God, you've taken too long and things are stinky and it's really bad right now. Even now, I know that you can do something. Even now, I know that you've got this. And Jesus responds in verse 25. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And it's who he is. And that's what I love about this statement. That's what I love about this story. Is that so often we focus on on Easter Sunday, on the event of resurrection, on on Jesus rising from the dead and overcoming death. We, We focus on the event of resurrection. But here, the resurrection isn't an event, it's a person. It's who he is. It's not an event, it's a person. It's who Jesus is. And and what I love about that, and I know I'm getting excited because I want us to get this this morning, that, that when the resurrection walks in the room, when Jesus walks in the room, dead things don't stay dead. When Jesus walks in the room, our doubt can, can be turned around to faith. When, when dead things uh, walk in, when Jesus walks in the room, when the resurrection walks in the room, our discouragement can be turned into hope. And so we can go from being dead in the delay to knowing that all things are possible when Jesus walks in the room. And in your room right now, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching this, I want you to know that where you're feeling dead on the inside, Whatever that is for you, Jesus can bring you back to life if we invite him into the room. Because he is the resurrection and the life. He takes what is dead and brings it back to life again. Isn't that incredible? That's what we celebrate this Easter, that, that Jesus takes that is, that what is dead and brings it back to life. The Bible says all of us were dead in our sin. We were, we were separated from God and he brings us back to a life in him, in the fullness of a life in him. That's the miracle of Easter. That's who Jesus is. He is the resurrection and the life. And so this morning, you might feel trapped You might feel like you've got a stone rolled in front of you and you go, I haven't got the strength to roll that stone away. But it doesn't matter. We don't have to be strong because he is. He is. He's that good that we just come to him and say, would you, right now, even though my situation is really stinky, even though I've thought maybe you're too late, even though I'm already a bit dead in the inside, Even now, even now, all things are possible. And so Jesus goes to Lazarus in the story and and the stones rolled away and he says, come out, Lazarus. Come out, Lazarus. And out he comes. And I love that. That Jesus is saying to us this morning, "Just, just step out. Just step out. I want to bring you back to life. I want to bring you all the faith and the hope and the joy and the beauty of life this morning. I want to bring you back to life. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And in a weekend where where we've had predicted the most deaths of this pandemic so far in our country, and I think we're around 10,000 now. In a week of death, and devastation and destruction. I genuinely believe this morning God wants to bring life. I think he wants to to bring healing life to those who are sick. 
I think he wants to bring um, life to marriages and families and relationships. I think he wants to bring life to our finances and our jobs. And, but I think most of all, he wants to bring life on the inside of us. Eternal life, full life. Jesus says, I came to give life and life to its fullness, in all its fullness. And so if we're feeling a bit dead on the inside, I want to invite you this morning to say yes to Jesus. Because after he said, I am the resurrection and the life, he said, do you believe this? Because he's calling us out. He's saying, come out. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I believe yes. I believe he is the resurrection and life. I believe that, that one touch from him can change everything. That when he walks in the room, things change. It's what I believe, it's what I know, it's what I've experienced. And I want you this morning to, to experience that for yourself, to, to invite Jesus in. And I'm not saying everything's perfect here on in when we say yes to Jesus. So it's not all perfect, but there is life there and life in all its fullness. And God gets glorified by it. He takes what is, what is bad and makes it good and for his glory. He's taken the pandemic, he's taken this illness, he's taken this disastrous weekend of death and is bringing life. And maybe you're, you're, you're dead on the inside, the deadness hasn't just been the last few weeks, maybe it's been a lifetime. And he can take that too and bring him glory through that. He is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And it might be a, a big yes for you. It might be a little yes. I think I do, but I don't know. Or it might be a maybe. But I want to encourage you this morning just to take this moment to invite Jesus in. I'm going to pray um, in a moment and Vickers is going to come up and, and play and lead us into worship as well. But if... If you want to pray with us this morning, I want to invite you to do that. And as Lazarus kind of came out the tomb, I want to invite you to stand up where you are right now. I want to invite you to stand up just as a, like you're coming out of the tomb, to stand up in, in the room that you're in, maybe your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, to stand up, to make that stand. And Jesus didn't just say to Lazarus, come out of the tomb. He said, take your grave clothes off. Take your grave clothes off. And this morning, I just want to shed that doubt and that discouragement and that despair. And it's in Isaiah 61, which is a passage that is really dear to our hearts at Restore. It's kind of our mandate. It's what we, we long to bring. It and so there's this beautiful exchange that happens at the cross of Jesus, at his, his, his death and his life and his resurrection, that he brings beauty for ashes, that he brings joy for mourning and praise instead of despair. And if this morning you want some beauty and some joy and some praise, why don't you do the exchange? Take your grave clothes off, take off discouragement, take off doubt, take off um, despair, and pick up the beauty and joy and praise available to you this morning. So we're going to pray together, and it might be after I've prayed with us um, that you might want to click the live prayer button and pray with someone else and continue the conversation and we're going to worship together. So why don't you, wherever you are, if you're standing right now, why don't you just stand there? I find it really helpful to put my hands out and to close my eyes. You don't have to do that. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I just find it helps me focus. And maybe you could pray along with me this morning. If you want to say, yes, I believe this. I believe Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I believe that. And I want the dead things in my life to come alive. I want to invite Jesus in, the resurrection and the life. So Jesus, we thank you that you are the resurrection and the life. We thank you that the resurrection wasn't just an event, but it's you. <laughs> It's who you are. Lord, that you bring dead things back to life. And so, Father, where we're a little bit dead on the inside right now, we want to ask you to come and bring life. And life in all its fullness.
eternal life. Lord, we want to trade our, our doubts for faith. We want to trade our discouragement for hope. And we want to trade the thought that you've taken too long to know that all things are possible in you and through you. And Father, for those of us who have never said yes to you before, I want to say yes to a life, a full life with you, that we're tired of being dead on the inside. We want to say yes to you. Lord, we ask for a forgiveness for our sins. We ask your presence and your spirit to fill us now that we might have hope for the future. A real hope, a true hope, because you are the resurrection and the life. Amen.